Okay, welcome to the video. This one's for Sam, um, one of many Sams, and other people who might be interested at all. About film testing, point and shoot cameras. I bought this one on Sunday for a pound, and I've had this one for about six or seven months, maybe even eight months, and it hasn't sold yet because I've got a very high price. If you can see, it's really, really, really nice, this one. Really good condition, not a mark on it. Um, so anyway, I'll show you how to film test both of them. They're both exact, well, you'll see that there's differences inside, but you do the same process on both of them. So, first things to do is to make sure it turns off on and off. Like that. There's a slide, turn it on and off. But this one's got no batteries in. It did have a pair of Duracells, which are a particularly good brand of uh, battery. I'm not sure whether everybody in the world uses them. I certainly do, when I can get hold of them. But um, I'm quite happy to use Asda price ones as well. These are alkaline and they're just as heavy. If you don't know, the way to tell whether the battery is good is how heavy it is. Because mostly they use the same chemicals inside with, you know, to a, the most extent. Um, so let's put them in. One that side, one that side. That should turn it on. And so we know now, because the light is getting a little bit low, it's um, half seven, that it flashes and winds on. Or at least it sounds like it does. We don't know for certain that the film winds on properly. We don't know for certain that it winds back properly. So I've got my gooseneck with my phone pointing down just off screen here on the left. On my right, sorry. Your left, my right. Um, and we're going to open the back of this camera, load it with one of my two films. I've got two um, old films that come in little canisters like this. If you ever see them at the car boot and they're nothing, a few pence or it's useful to have one for testing these. So we'll go over to the other cam, um, the other camera, the um, phone which I've got on the gooseneck, uh, rather than change this one, and I'll do this one face down, over to the left. So here we are with uh, the two cameras on my uh, blue mat and. Two, uh, two films there. One's in the film container and one isn't. Well, well, one's inside it, one's in a little light open there. Right, so I showed you I'd put batteries in this one and it's on when you do that and it takes shots. So we know that's working. This Yoshika um, doesn't have any batteries in. We'll put some in it. Um, these are nickel metal hydride I've just charged up so they should be good for a bit of time they don't last as long as the alkalines but obviously you can recharge them this is one with a date back that doesn't go past 2019 but I think anybody can see this is a really nice little camera and once it's been turned on it zooms a long way out a long way in this is a 105 millimeter lens it says there 38 to 105 millimeter and in really nice condition so what we're going to do is test both of them with a film that light means it's ready to flash there you go so if we open the back of this one we can close the lens off if we close the lens by the way it stops charging the flash um, and the same with this one we'll turn it off for the moment so when you open the back first thing to do is to make sure there's no dust and dirt and hairs and bits of old film this one's fairly clean although there is a bit of a mark there on the uh, plastic on the inside there 
that won't make any difference but it could um reflect some light on the inside so i will clean that actually i didn't notice that before but yeah i'll clean that um so these don't have any foam down the sides they have a little groove to stop the light getting through except for here where there's it, the door has a sort of what would you call that a curtain and it stops light getting in the same way by putting it into a groove in there so we'll get a film out this is a film i've used several times and if you can see i've already cut it down at least once because i've um damaged the these holes here they do get damaged when you take it out now normally it's under the last like few centimeters and when a film's processed at the processes they just cut that off anyway and it so it make, makes no difference but we'll i'll show you what to do if it's damaged when you take it out of the film when you take it out of the camera later on so you're best off taking the least amount of film possible and what you do is you put it into the groove like that and it just drops in it it, it may look awkward at times especially when it's upside down some cameras if you look at this one that one the film's upside down this one the film is that way up it makes no difference to the function of the camera all it means is the negatives are upside down on the film and the film's going to be um well for anyone who's seriously uh, interested in photography this film is going to be processed in chemicals not this one this one's already been overexposed many many times i probably used this maybe four or five times up to now they don't last forever because if these bits get damaged you cut the end off and you reshape it you can see where i've reshaped it in felt tip pen there it's just a matter of well i'll show you that later so anyway you put the film in like so and drop it in then you push this round so that it's flat now that's not enough it wants to be a little bit more so that it's hanging over the round thing it's going to go on to and then you see up here there's a little cogwheel your best bet is to have at least one possibly two teeth in the cogwheel there's a cogwheel there and on this one there's no cogwheel but there is a little tooth that comes out and moves the film along um so that it's exactly the same thing but it's in reverse i'll show you that now so here's the other film this is why i got two out and this just drops in like so and then you're pushing it round so that it's flat and pulling it out so that it lays over this wheel now this wheel has got teeth on you won't see them very often but they have teeth so if it's hanging over the wheel and between these two sets of rows of pegs it's running in the right direction this has got pegs but not very big ones so that's it that's how you load the film close them that one winds on automatically and it says number one this one doesn't but it will say s because it's just started so if you then open it You've got to take a couple of shots. You don't have to wait for the flash to wind on. Now with it, it says one in the little lens hole there. It's showing you that it's picked up the film. We'll take a couple more. Actually, I should have turned the flash off. There is no turn the flash off button on this one. It's auto, it's all automatic, which is fair enough. That's why it's called AF autofocus and if you close the lens it won't wind on 
it stops it. If you open the lens again, it winds on again. So it's had, if you can see in there, it says four. So it's had four shots past the starter. If we open it again, you'll see that it's been taken up by the reel and it's on there. And that's what you want to check. Check that it's been taken up and it's tightly on, or nearly tightly, onto the roll. And it, this film is obviously letting the, letting the film go. Show you again on this one. This one has a little window there, shows you where the film is. It says there's 36 exposures and there's currently only one. But I'm going to turn the flash off on this one. Um, this is a flash off button. My fingers are too fat for it though. Let's turn it on anyway. Right, it's on auto flash. We'll just go to flash off. There you go. Just to save batteries. Now this is the um, the focus and the, the the button here. So this is an auto focus. Let's turn the auto on. Oh, it's charging flash again. Turn the flash off. There you go. What we're doing is waiting for it to be charged up. And the lights come up here. You see through this little flash, this little um, viewfinder, and you take your shot. This has actually got a panoramic mode as well. So it takes a, a wider shot. And the, the reason that it's timed like this is so that it can you can pan along like that on the film. Very clever. Anyway, back to normal. Also has a timer. Much more sophisticated camera. It's still in panoramic mode. <laughs> there you go. Right, so it's taken seven shots now. We'll open the side. Now, obviously, you wouldn't take open this normally when you'd be exposing the film. You'd wait until the film was completely used and then you'd press the rewind button and it would rewind. This camera has automatic rewind. But there's also a rewind button. If you were halfway through a film and you wanted to finish it, you could press that button there. But yeah, when you are through the film, don't forget, I've already taken seven shots. It's reset itself because I had the back open. Right, so we now know it's got 10 shots on it. And this one's got, is open. This one's got five on it. We'll take a few more. Right, so this has it says it's got four shots on it, but that's because we opened the back. It reset to S. It takes two or three shots to get to one on this because the, the first couple of shots are, are normally throwaway. It says it's a 24 shot film or a 36 shot film. There's normally plus three because they wasted them. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Sorry, did I knock it there? There we go. So, we're now going to start the rewind to be certain that it winds back. Um, there's a little button underneath here on this one. Now, we know it's had seven or eight. No, there's about ten shots taken on this, isn't there? But we don't want to wind it back 10 frames because if we wind it back 10 whole frames, we won't ever be able to use the film again. It's gone back into the container and you will have a hell of a time getting it out again. You'll damage the container. So what you do is this. You start the wind back 
and then once it's started wind back you can open the back and it'll stop they all stop so there you go it'll stop they always stop and then the thing to do is take the camera film out and to manually wind the rest back it, there's a little you see that little motor there that's the one that winds it back there's a little motor there and that's what winds it back off this frame off this reel yeah so if you do it manually you can wind it off this reel and it'll let you gradually you've got to do it very slowly and wind the film in at the same time so that you don't lose the film you don't damage the film it doesn't matter that it's overexposed because you're never going to use it for taking photographs you're going to use it again for taking um, you're going to use it again for testing cameras right there we go it's come off and that's not very damaged at all because I let it go loose and then I pulled it out and it hasn't damaged any of the little holes as you can see sometimes these holes get caught in the teeth and get damaged but that one seems fine but I will show you what to do with the film if that's the case so we know now that it winds on let's just close that away we know that it winds on it takes photos it flashes and it winds back so that is now film tested it's had wind on and wind back as a film tested camera i will also like i said clean that little bit of it's not really dirt it's just grubbiness there's no real uh, chance of that coming out onto the film but i will clean it off so that's nice clean and i'm going to put it back in its case which is this nice pentax case it came with which uh, was covered in paint but i've cleaned it off right we'll do the same with the yashika it's got um let's turn itself off let's turn it back on we've got to wait for the flash to like, charge up so this one is a bit slower to um, cycle through to charge and the flash we'll turn the flash off again and it's still set for it's still doing the slow um, shots right anyway we'll turn it off and we're going to press that little button you see the little button there this is where a pen comes in handy it starts winding back but again you really need to be stopping it before it winds all the way in so we'll take the film out we'll wind the film in a little bit grab the film itself it doesn't matter if you get fingerprints all over it let's uh, wind the film up so that we can use it again if it gets all tangled like that it's not as good because you've got to untangle it now got to untangle this you're probably better off only pulling it out a few inches and then un and then uh, winding it into the frame into the uh, into the can but it's not a big deal either way as long as you just take your time now you have to come off the reel you see how that's damaged there that's what happens it's just a thing that happens anyway it's decided to decided to wind itself on again and take the batteries out we now know that this is flashing it's winding on it's winding back and um, it turns on and off 
and we also know that the wide angle and telephoto works. So that's going in its Yashica case and that's already listed up for sale. So here we are. This is the film that's been damaged by the by the um, teeth on this Yashica and it's not a big deal. As you can see, I've already cut this one down myself, this film. This is a 36 shot film. And like I say, there's 36, but they normally include like 39 because of this happens. And plus, you're never going to take... When, when it first winds on, it's going to wind about three or four frames from when you open up, which means it's about that much wasted film anyway. So it doesn't make any difference. Plus, of course, this is overexposed because it's been opened. It's being used many times. Right. So what to do about this so that you can use it again? Obviously, if you use that into with the teeth, it might damage. It might rip the fray, It might rip the film. The film's quite strong, you know. This film's quite strong. But it might rip it. And then those bits of plastic might go into the cogs of the camera. You don't want that. So the thing to do is to just cut it off. Quite nasty really but you see how this has got a shape to it you get the film you overlay it let's put it on a bit of paper a bit of card that'll do you overlay it and you get it to line up with the holes so that the bit that's overlaid has still got plenty of room in it. If you then use a bit of felt tip pen and you go around the film with your felt tip, try to get it to stick. This is um, uh, this is permanent, but it seems to be not doing a very good job so there we are let's uh, close that the lid down where's the lid there we are so the film's now got the outline on it can you see that it's not very well lit is it i should have done this with a with a, an overhead light as well just bear with me a second the street um the uh, the room light might be enough yeah it's definitely brighter isn't it so can you see on that film that there's an outline that I've drawn around this bit you just take your nice sharp scissors and you cut it out. Trying to make sure that there's plenty of plastic around the eyelets that the cogs are going to reach into and grab. See? You could have cut it through with one of those and then it would have likely shattered again. And make sure that there's no real sharp edges. So you can put a tiny little bit of a curve on there like that. Because obviously a sharp edge like that might damage the camera if it was to drop in. Whereas something that's nice and smooth won't. So that's ready for the next film test. And as you saw, I only used like seven or eight shots. And this is a 36 shot film. If that happens four or five times, you'll still have maybe 20 shots left. And that's plenty for testing. So you might get 15, if you're careful, I mean, this one wasn't damaged at all, but if you're careful, you might get 15 tests out of one roll of film. So that one's going back in its case with a lid on and the same for that one so they're going well I normally stick them on top of my printer with 
loot tax so that they're not lost. And these little bits are going in the bin. And that's it. Right, back to me in front of the camera. So, um, I hope that was helpful in how to test the cameras. Um, obviously, those two words, film tested, mean such a lot to people who are buying on eBay because they're the people who are going to run film through the camera and if you haven't fully tested the camera, you're laying yourself open to somebody saying it doesn't work. But if you've tested it and it says fully tested and working, film tested, you know, I've tested the run on, the rewind, the wind on, the flash, you can do all that um, and the rewind and you can say it's fully film tested. And it does add value to the camera and also it means that people trust you more when you're selling it to them. That's the main thing. They're, all you're doing is taking that slight bit of doubt about it off, you know? So, I hope you uh, found it useful. Could you thumbs up? It would be really helpful to me if you could. Um, and also, if you are subscribed and you don't see every video because, I, I mean, I've been putting one or two film uh, videos a week out recently. Um, if you don't want to miss any, uh, ring the little bell. If you're not subscribed, you could subscribe and ring the little bell. It's great, that, isn't it? Um, I hope that was helpful, Sam, and anybody else as well. Anybody else who fancies um, making an inquiry about any of these little tech gadget things that I could uh, help you with, just drop a comment. Right, thanks very much for watching. Right, I'm going to get some tea.